Ani Franco. What's up, Turkey? Hello, John. What's up, Alois? How are you? Good, it's nice. You got your nice limousine, your driver, everything nice. <laughs> yeah, there's my driver. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Glenn? Hey, What's up, Johnny? What up? My Glad homie. Glad 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 What's going on, brothers? Looking all clean cut, Mikey. You know, when, when, when it gets gray, you just got to blend it out, take it off. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody and welcome to Like We Never Left. It is the show that brings back together many of your favorite sports personalities from the city of New York. And today we are delighted to be joined by many of the pitchers who helped get the New York Mets to the 2000 World Series. We are so happy to have Al Leiter and Mike Hampton, John Franco, Turk Wendell, Pat Mahomes and Glendon Rush with us on the show today. Guys, so great to see everybody. When's the last time you saw each other? I, I saw Turk um, like <laughs> for a few years. What about that was like 2010, uh, like 10, 10 years of anniversary of the NLCS. Yeah, That's Gary, we right. got old timers disease. We don't remember the, we don't remember <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> when you're a part of something so special, right? I mean, you guys go to the World Series in 2000. That's a bond you have forever. And what's it like when you share a bond like that? It seems like when we say this, or at least uh, what I'll say now, sounds gratuitous, but we had a bunch of group of guys that were genuinely fun guys. We liked being with them. Uh, we'd rip on each other, but we liked each other. There was a lot of that going on. And I am a huge believer when you have that kind of chemistry and for the most part in the entire room, you get along. A lot a lot of good comes from that. We were very, very close uh, in the clubhouse. We, we had a lot of fun in the clubhouse. Uh, you know, whether it was turkey eating uh, wasabi balls, trying to prove a point there, <laughs> that, you know, that, or oh, you know, that was funny. Turk going on a, a four mile run and coming back and making these shakes. Or, I don't know what the hell he put in them, but, <laughs> but we had we had a lot of fun. And, and, and yeah. I think it made the season go by by quicker, uh, especially when you when you win. Turk, what was in those wasabi balls? Started out with Johnny said, well, how much? I'll give you a hundred dollars if you eat this. And then it got around the table and I think it was some like eleven hundred dollars. I put it in my mouth and Al said, but you got to chew it 12 times. I think I got the floor <laughs> with a deep breath and water just started coming out of every orifice of my face, <laughs> ears. And then Johnny started screaming, spit it out, spit it out. You won't be able to play in the game. Little did I know yeah. that some people have died eating too much wasabi. <laughs> hey, Mike, you were only in New York playing for the Mets for one year. What, what was that one year like for you? Being the newcomer, uh, these guys just welcomed me with open arms. I mean, uh, Johnny and Al, you know, were the veterans of the group, and then we had you know, a mix of, of, of the younger younger guys as well. But um, I just felt at home from the time I got there, and uh, to be able to do that in New York was saying a lot because uh, coming from a small town like I I was, and, and being thrust into the city in the spotlight, um, these guys helped me handle it um, pretty well. It, it was shaky to start. I mean, I was pretty good, pretty good struggle at first, trying to probably do a little bit too much, but. Um, uh, these guys would talk to me every day and I'd sit down with Al and he's, Hey, what's your game? What's your game plan? I really learned a lot. So that 2000 season began in Japan. And I, I remember how historic that was. It's funny because, um, I had just played, uh, a couple of years over there in Japan. Uh, I went over there from the Red Sox and, um, had actually won a, a Japanese world series over there. And, you know, and I, and I got back here and, and my, First game the, the following year was in Japan, so I kind of felt like I knew the country a little bit, uh, knew some places to take the boys. Uh, we had some fun. You know, I was battling all the way through that spring training just to try and make the team. So, uh, you know, to get the opportunity to, to make the club as the fifth starter and go to Japan. I actually started one of the exhibition games, so I'm undefeated in Japan, 1-0. <laughs> <laughs> I, tell, I tell kids around here all the time, I tell them that one, they like that. So, but no, it was a great, great experience. We had a blast over there and, you know, it, look, every guy on this call today uh, mentored me in, in one way or another. You know, I used to ride to the park all the time with Pat and Ricky Henderson. Those are some of the funniest stories I've probably had in my career, uh, going back and forth to the park with them. So, man, these, you know, it's, it's fun and to Rick, see Rick, you still don't know your name. Yeah, no, no I'm, <laughs> I'm still lefty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mike, you started the first game in Japan and, and the uh, the Cubs won that game. But in game two, wasn't it Benny Agbayani who hit the grand slam? What, what was that like, Johnny Franco? Did Benny come up in that situation to, to hit a grand slam, the big kahuna that he was? Uh, 
uh, they love them over there. Uh, being from Hawaii, uh, I think it was great. Uh, Benny, Benny enjoyed it. And that was a really interesting season for, for Benny. He hits the home run in Japan, and then he hits the big home run in the postseason. And along the way against the Giants, he hands the ball to a fan thinking there were three outs, yeah. which was, <laughs> right? One Captain of the classic moments. One. Can you guys remember back to that game? Thank God we won. <laughs> who, who remembers that game well? Mike does. Mike was pitching, wasn't it, when Benny tossed the ball in the stands? Yeah, I think I was pitching. Oh, uh, I, need to, I need to have a discussion with him. <laughs> you know what? It, but it, it's kind of good. I mean, hey, you never know what your career is going to look like. He was a young kid. He's, he, he can, he's going to be on TV forever for giving a ball to a fan during a game. And it's an out. Yeah. So, hey, he was just looking out for maybe some endorsement deals down the road. <laughs> let's look at the Braves rivalry that year. They won the division. You guys finished second. And let's begin with John Rocker. What are your recollections of John Rocker coming to Shea Stadium in the summer of 2000 after that really controversial and hurtful article in Sports Illustrated where he pretty much accosted everybody who was walking the planet who was different from him? What do you remember about that night? Uh, well, obviously, it, 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 you couldn't be any... Uh, you know, make dumber comments than he did. I mean, it's you can't sugarcoat that. So I don't know the guy. I don't think I ever even said hello. So I don't know what he was about other than, you know, asking uh, some of his old teammates. Uh, I remember the security was crazy uh, yeah. as a result of him making dumb comments. Uh, and I remember it almost had, it was nutty. I, I have to throw it out there to the other guys. If I could remember, it almost seemed like NYPD was there in force like like a real major uh, threat uh, that you'd see at, a, a, dare I say, the 9-11 game. But I remember there was that kind of attention. The one thing that we did was we, we told the, the guy, uh, kid, the guy who was in charge of the speed gun, every, if he came in the game, make sure the speed gun was lower than higher. <laughs> so, so if he was throwing 97 in Atlanta, he would look, he'd always look back and see how hard he's throwing. When he came to Shea yeah. Stadium, he was throwing 92, 91. You could just see him getting mad and the veins coming out of his neck <laughs> and trying to throw the ball, ball a little harder. So that was a little revenge that we got back on him like that. But, uh, you know, when somebody makes those comments, you just take it for what it is and where it's coming from. All those games we played against the Braves, I mean, they always were very intense. Um, I remember, you know, mostly what I remember is every time Turk would face Brian Jordan, he'd hit him. And uh, mm -hmm. I always thought it was funny because he knew it was coming and Turk would hit him and, and stare him down and he'd come out and he'd act like he wanted to come out there and Turk would meet him halfway and he'd take his ass on down to first base. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, stuff like that, you know, I just kind of love. So I want to ask you about a game on, on June 11th. It was at Yankee Stadium and that was the game that got rained out in the third inning. And Robin Ventura comes out and he does the Mike Piazza impersonation. And I was looking back at some of the video and I saw you, Glendon, and you, Al, all you guys were on the top step of, of the dugout. I remember every year that it comes out, uh, you know, that people start circulating it. Everyone sends it to me because I'm like a little kid on the on the uh, radio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this big huge smile of watching him do it, man. He's so, you know, Robin was so much fun and and uh, probably from, from what a lot of people know is more of an undercover jokester. Yes. And great sense of humor and, um, I mean, he used to make fun of the way I walked all the time. So he'd be at third base and we'd strike a guy out and they'd throw the ball around and he'd walk back over like to me and throw the ball <laughs> to me in the middle of the game. <laughs> Making fun Sneak. of me. So, yeah, he's, he's the best, man. That, that was awesome. Sneaky funny. Let's go to the 2000 playoffs uh, against the Giants. I think it was game two. And John, you ended that with the strikeout of Barry Bonds, which just, it's, it froze him. I'm not sure he loved the call. But to this day, I would think I loved it. that was strike three. <laughs> yes, it was strike three. Of course yeah. it was strike three. You know, I, I, I faced Barry over the number of years and from when I was in Cincinnati, obviously coming to the Mets, and I never threw him a changeup. Uh, I remember speaking to John Old previous year about the hardest pitch for him to hit against a lefty, and he said it was a changeup because we hardly ever throw it to, to a lefty. And I remember, forget, he fouled, he fouled back the 3-1 pitch straight back, and I said, I don't think I'm going to throw that pitch again. <laughs> so, the, you know, the worst thing I could do is walk him and take my chances with Jeff Kent. But uh, I remember Mike kept throwing down the fastball sign. I kept shaking him off and finally went change up. And to me, I look at that video, it's a strike. And uh, 
to this day, Barry thinks it was a ball, but I always tell him, what did the umpire call it? It was a strike. <laughs> yep. And then two days later, I struck him out on a high fastball, so he can't complain either way. Um, I remember um, we were playing the, the clinching game, Bobby Jones was pitching, and they wanted to fly me back to San Francisco early. And I was like, come on, man, we win this game. I'm gonna be here to celebrate. I'm like, there's no chance. I'm not gonna sleep anyway. <clears throat> so I hung out and he threw, what, a one hitter, one hit shot, like the most amazing game of <clears throat> of his career and probably phew, I mean, one of the top pitching performers in Mets postseason history. So I was super excited that I stayed. Mark McGuire was injured for the championship series, but there was always the threat of him pinch hitting. Turk, uh, what was it like knowing that, that you know, Mark McGuire was looming as a potential pinch hitter? Uh, for me, I don't know. Everyone made a big deal out of it because, I mean, basically he was, I made him a bitch. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know how he, he just I mean I said obviously he was a great hitter but and I, I truthfully got away with a lot of really good pitches that he followed straight back but I just I think I was probably one of those guys that he just didn't pick the ball up off of very good and uh, I just I sometimes I outguessed him I mean obviously I hardly ever threw a fastball but I came in one, <laughs> one game in the middle of the season against him with runners in scoring position and threw him three fastballs and he never swung and he just looked at me like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, there were some good battles and uh, guys like him, I just, I don't know, I was never really, I guess, feared of, fearful of. I just was more focused on guys like him. So, it, it, and to me, that's what it was all about, facing guys like that in big situations. And then the Subway Series, the World Series against the Yankees. Al, do you remember before it began, the, the atmosphere in the city? Yeah, yeah, it was fantastic. My feeling prior to whatever the Yankees were going to do, it was 100% I wanted to face the Yankees. I thought it would have been super cool. Didn't happen for 47 years when the Brooklyn Dodgers were still in New York. Having grown up in the area, grew up a Mets fan, was drafted by the Yankees, got to the big leagues as a Yankee when I started my career. Loved every, every single time pitching at old Yankee Stadium. Knew it was a challenge, but it was just, it had that electricity, excitement. Call it what you want. The city, pledge your allegiance. You know, Mayor Giuliani got behind it, Mets, Yankee, all the colors. I was totally into it. One of the big storylines of that series, you know, sort of emanated from what happened during the regular season. I think it was on the 8th of July that, that Roger Clemens beat Mike Piazza. And then in game two of the World Series, he throws the bat shard in Piazza's direction. Well, with the bat situation, I mean, I think we were all kind of dumbfounded. We didn't know what was going on. Um, the, you know, the, the stuff that happened during the regular season, I was a part of. I was the opposing pitcher in the game um, at Yankee Stadium. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it was, look, we know that Mike wore out Roger and Roger didn't like it. And, uh, and you know, he he pitched him tough. And, and, and uh, unfortunately, you know, what happened happened. I, I think it was... I think everyone's heads, calmer heads prevailed in the World Series. We don't need anybody ejected. Nobody uh, needs to miss games. We needed everybody. So I think when you look at it from that perspective, that's probably all that, you know, needed to happen at that point in time. But yeah, it was pretty crazy. Mike, do I remember you saying that maybe you should have gone after Clements? Yeah, he threw like eight shutout innings. I wish he went and knocked him out. <laughs> yeah, knock him out. <laughs> I would have to take that. Beat it, beat it. Let's go. Let's roll. And then you're in the World Series, you're like, all right, I mean, am I going to drill somebody? I mean, I hit enough people on accident. I mean, do I really need to drill somebody on purpose? I really, you know, I, it's just in that big a moment. It just, you know, I, I couldn't afford to put any men, more men on the base. But um, I, 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 I was quoted at one time saying, you know, I don't care if Mike Tyson was on the mound, I got to go get my ass whooped. But um, I, 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 I was just a bad thing, you know, like getting hit in the head and then your very next at bat breaking his bat and throwing it at him. And, and yeah, it is a shocking because you're like, you've never seen anything like that before. And then when somebody says, oh, I thought it was the ball. I mean, come on, give me a break, man. How do you think that's a ball? And so 21 years later, since, you know, since you lost to the Yankees, I just wonder if the sting of that, I know time heals, but is it something you take with you that, man, I wish we could have had a different outcome? Oh, heck yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm still, you know, the, uh, the Yes Network wears the hell out of that game five. I told the uh, I told uh, them that they had got to start paying me a royalty for that damn game. I still get pissed off that I threw Derek Jeter two changeups in a row. I don't throw a changeup once in a month, and I throw it in game five in a two-two game. I'm still <laughs> mad at that pitch. Damn, was that stupid? You know what? What stood out for that World Series? Yes, the Mike bat. 
that was bizarro beyond um you know whether he went out or not it is what it is i agree uh with hampy you know roger was amazing uh and then you go to game one and i know it sounds like you know like whiny stuff but it wasn't only timo you know i think todd even admitted he thought he had a home run but when you yeah. when you talk about an even series literally for five games i think we were outscored by two runs for five right. games uh and, and and you have that pivotal game it was the mighty yanks it was the dynasty of a team that won you know world series you know as they did 96 98 99 and then 2000 so we didn't feel as though we were truly the little engine that could we knew we were a good team but we were facing the yankees and that game one pivotal moment yes timo didn't run should he have ran scores there's a difference do we win game one maybe uh it's just it, it, it had that much of a of a blow uh, you know, mm-hmm. by by having that pivotal aspect of going into a game two, you you, you know, you go one one there, you go home, but whatever, yeah. the rest is history. But yes, it, it still stings. I'll be honest. If there's one moment, and I'll begin with you on this, Turk, one moment that you take from that season that you really do remember that you puts a smile on your face. The one thing that really stands out is me being the losing pitcher in Game One of the World Series. So that pretty much <laughs> sucks. <laughs> um, but I don't know. The, the one thing that really puts a smile on my face is just, like everyone said, the group of guys and, and getting to the World Series. I mean, that's the goal we work for day one starting spring training. Our team was not a group of superstar players like the Yankees had. We were just a bunch of kind of somewhat misfits, if you would, that no one cared who was the hero of the game as long as we won the game. I was a you know a somewhat young player with that crew and all these guys helped me along. Um, Al Leiter pulled me in the dugout in spring training in Port St. Lucie and pulled my pants like halfway up my torso and told me to be a little tougher and be a little meaner out on the mound. So, you know, all these guys were, were a huge part of it. And, uh, and I love, you know, I love being around them and it's, it's great to catch up. It's always fun. And I sent Turk a, a text uh, not too long ago that in one of the games in the World Series, he came in and bailed me out, and I sent him a text because it was it was on the Yes Network. I was like, "Thanks for getting me out of that." <laughs> <laughs> Pat, how about you? Finally, uh, asking Robin, you know what happened in the, the Nolan Ryan incident? Uh, <laughs> you know, I was kind of the guy that kind of kept it loose in the club. I was uh, I used to call myself the glue, you know, and um, and we had a team dinner or whatever, and. And I asked him about the incident, and uh, he kind of explained it to us and everything. So, you know, I got a good kick out of that. Black jerseys are a big issue again. Let's go around my captain. What's your take on the black jerseys? You guys made them very famous. I love the black jerseys. I think I got I picked it every time I pitched. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a, a yay for the black jerseys. Bring them back. Al? I'm on the fence. Wow. I, I uh, again, I go back to, you know, as a kid, I, I love the uh, the pinstripes, but but yeah, we wore that black jersey a lot, and uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be offended by it. But I, I don't know. I, I kind of like the old school stuff. John, I like the old school stuff, but uh, I also like the black jersey. So I I say bring them back. Why not? Glendon, yes, I'm a black jersey guy. Turk, black jersey and make them sleeveless. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Pat? Definitely the black jersey. Always my favorite. One that still rock to this day. Listen, want to thank you for uh, taking some time, sharing the memories, and making us feel like we never left. Thanks, guys.